hello and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's video, I am going to be giving you my six month post-op update, which is crazy. I cannot believe it has been six months. In fact, it's been a little bit more than six months when I'm filming this. I am a little bit delayed in getting this to you, but what I'm going to be talking about in this video is those six months. I think I'm like six months and two weeks post-op when I'm filming this. It has been an absolutely crazy ride. I honestly can't believe it's been six months already. It's gone so quickly, but then when I think back, my entire life has changed. Everything is different. So I'm going to be giving you a bit of an overview as to how I have found the last six months and in particular the last month, which is what I always do in these videos. And then at the end, I'll be telling you about my weight loss for the last month and how much weight I've lost overall in the past six months. So let's get started with talking about how this last month has been. The last month has been a little bit more tricky. I think that what everyone seems to say is very much true. When you sort of get five, six months post-op, things do tend to get a little bit harder. Now, don't get me wrong, things are still a million times easier to control than they used to be. But you do need to use a little bit more willpower, a little bit more planning. You can't necessarily rely on the tool of surgery as much as you have been able to in the first couple of months. You have to work a little bit harder, which I always knew would happen because your body is healing and getting used to its new way of being. And so it means that you do need to put a little bit more effort in. So I have found that what I can eat has definitely increased. And I found myself like beating myself up for how much I was eating until I stepped back and had a look at look at it sort of holistically and realized it was still nowhere near as much as I was eating post-surgery. It just felt a lot because it was more than I could eat one or two months out of surgery, which is part of the process. It's completely normal and to be expected. And with that, I do crave food a little bit more. I do um, feel hunger a little bit more. And when I say feel hunger, it's still, I'm never starving. I'm just, it's so hard to explain. I'm just wanting food a bit more and craving those sweet treats a little bit more than I was. And it's still, like I said, nowhere near how it used to be, but it is taking a little bit more self-control. And this is where all the additional work comes in and you really start to recognize that the surgery is just a tool. It isn't a magic trick that's going to stop you from wanting chocolate or sweets or um, putting weight on ever again. It is just a tool that you need to use, but you need to apply other things alongside it. So discipline and planning. And that's what I'm finding I'm having to do a bit more now. I haven't got it cracked at all. I haven't got it cracked. We have not been in a routine. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going on in life that has meant I just, I just haven't felt able to be in a routine. But now it's really important for me that I figure that out. I get my weekly plan um, for the food shop sorted, meal planning, prepping, all of these things I think are going to be super important to me. I... I'm going through a lot of changes in life at the moment, it's really good stuff. For example, I've just got a new job, which I'm actually starting tomorrow, um, which I'll talk a bit more about in a proper life update. Um, but it's just meant that the past month or two has just been a little bit hectic with the change of job and some other stuff that's been going on. So I haven't managed to get that routine cracked. I feel like I haven't ever since surgery managed to get into a good routine. And so that's going to be something that is a huge focus for me in the coming months as I'm able to eat more. And as those cravings are starting to creep back in a little bit, it's going to be more important than ever that I, I really do figure that out. So if anyone has any tips for like, um, food planning or prepping or getting into a routine when with when it comes to food post-surgery please let me know because I really really need to crack that aspect I feel like I've been talking about that for a few months and I just I haven't managed to do it I've let life get in the way um rightfully so with some of the stuff that's been happening but also I need to you know stop making these excuses and realize that if I don't get it sorted then you know I'm not going to be as successful as I want to be on this journey that being said, I feel like in the last month I have seen 
the most drastic changes. And it's so, so exciting. Like my energy levels have increased so, so much. Uh, I can do things with my body that I couldn't do before. Um, like the other day, I don't think I've told this story before, but if I have, then forgive me. Cause I feel like it was maybe like two weeks ago, but it could have been like four weeks ago and I might've already talked about this, but hey, um, if I have, I'm just gonna, you know, just listen again. <laughs> but um, whenever it was like two weeks ago, four weeks ago, um, Adam and I were talking about something and I got really excited and I started jumping up and down on the spot. And then I realized that I don't know how many years it's been since I could jump up and down on the spot. So I got even more excited and I continued jumping. I was like, oh my God, I'm jumping, I'm jumping. <laughs> um, it sounds like such a silly thing, but when your body does something that it hasn't been able to do for a long time, it's just, it's just incredible and it's so exciting. So that was an amazing moment. I, like I said, I have so much more energy. I'm able to do more. I don't get out of breath in the same way that I used to. Um, I, I, I feel able to do more with my day. It's just amazing. I'm still going to the gym, not as much as I wanted to with all the changes that I've just been talking about. But like I said, I want to get into a routine and I want to make um, the gym a part of that. So I'm hoping to go at least twice a week. At the moment, I've just been doing sort of weightlifting by myself. So I've been using the Shreddy app um, because that's been quite good at telling me like what to do in my workout and showing me what to do with each of the moves. Um, I think I want to go back to body pump this month. Body pump is something that I used to enjoy a couple of years back when I was going to the gym a lot. Um, but just before COVID hit, I was doing a body pump class and I really, really, really hurt my back. It was just horrible um completely my fault i was laying back on the bench doing chest presses and i felt something tweak in my back and instead of stopping i felt embarrassed and so i just continued um and and i got home and it was fine like it felt fine i went to sleep and it was fine but then i woke up the next day and i got out of bed and i was like oh my gosh that hurts a little bit managed to walk into the room next to our bedroom um and by that point I was down on the floor like lying on my back and um like I think I lay down because I thought I needed to stretch out my back or something uh, but I couldn't get back up again so I had to wait for Adam to wake up to help me off the floor and I can't remember what I think I trapped a nerve or pulse I can't remember what the doctor said I'd done um but it was so bad that I couldn't work for like two weeks. I couldn't sleep in my own bed because I couldn't lie down. I had to stay like bent in some ways at all points. So for the first couple of days, um, the only way I could move around was using a wheelie chair, leaning over so I was like at a right angle and pushing myself around because I couldn't sit upright. I couldn't stand up straight. I couldn't like lie down. I couldn't be straight. So I had to sleep on the sofa for like two weeks and then the pandemic happened and then I, you know, lost all my fitness that I had. And I've been a bit scared to go back to body pump, even though it was my favorite class. So I think that's going to be a goal for this month is to get myself back to body pump and just take it slowly. Know that I might not be able to do what I used to do. Know that I'm building my strength back up and just, you know, take it at the pace that I can take it at. So I'll let you know in the next update how body pump has gone. And I also want to get back to doing spin, which is something I used to love when I would go, was going to the gym all the time. Um, like I remember a crazy point when me and my friend were, were going to spin like a couple of times a week and we even did a back-to-back -back class once, which was, uh, sounds sounds impossible to me right now. Um, but I do, I don't know if I'm ready for spin yet, but maybe the only way I'll know if I'm ready is to just try. Um, so maybe... Although saying that, I don't know if my, maybe my gym doesn't do spin. I'll have to see. I'm at the like local council gym, so I can go to any of them. So maybe mine doesn't do spin, but one of them does. So maybe I'll try body pump and spin this month and just see, just give it a go. You never know how you're going to do until you try things. So maybe, maybe I'll do that and I'll report back. But it's been so nice to feel able to do more and um, just feel more comfortable in my body because that's been the main point all along is to be able to do more and feel better in my body and so the fact that it's happening is just amazing. Um, I've also seen huge huge changes in the last month with my dress size. Now realistically these changes have been happening over a period of time but I've really seen them in the last sort of six weeks. My dress size has reduced dramatically. At the beginning of this journey I was 
a 30 to 32. Some places I could fit in a 28, but realistically I was a 30 and some places I needed to wear a 32. At the moment I'm wearing between a 22 and a 24. Some places I need more of a 20. Um, it's really hard to tell at the moment. And I'm having a lot of comments in videos from people telling me to buy smaller sizes and I'm trying to, but the problem is in like, I tried some stuff on from Boohoo the other day and I was a 26 and then I tried some stuff on from Evans and I was a 20. So I'm doing my best when I'm ordering sizes online. I'm trying my hardest to get the best sizes for my current size, but sometimes it's so hard to know. And I never want to order a load of clothes, have them come, be ready to film and none of them fit and not be able to make a video. Like there is that part of it too. Um, but I think that I will be ordering mostly 22s going forward, unless it's somewhere that I know is just a bit small fitting like Boohoo. But that's been interesting and it's about to open up so many doors because I haven't really started exploring, but it definitely means there's a lot of shops that I can now try that I hadn't tried before. So let me know in the comments if you want me to do any particular hauls because I need to plan my hauls for the next couple of weeks um and yeah really just experiment with some shops that I've not been able to shop at before which is really exciting the the, the I'm not going to say downside of changing dress size because I don't want to be negative but make okay no maybe it feels like a downsize a downside sorry is that I've had to declutter so much of my wardrobe. I've been doing my declutter series and I've been popping stuff up on Vinted. I've got so much more to list. It's just quite a time consuming process. So I'll link my vintage down below in case you want to check it out. There's not much up there at the moment, but over the next couple of weeks, I'll be listing a lot more. But my last declutter, part two of that is still to come, um, was so brutal. I think I got rid of 95% of that wardrobe, which is a good thing. As I said in that video, it is a good thing, but it's also really hard because I worked so hard to have those clothes from being someone that I had had just such a small wardrobe and didn't love anything that she owned to working my butt off for the past couple of years um, and building an incredible collection of clothes. It's been quite difficult to let them go. But at the same time, that opens up the door for me to bring in lots of lovely new things into my life. So I'm trying to look at it as that opportunity. Um, but yeah, it is. If I, if I didn't say that it's a little bit hard and a little bit sad, I wouldn't be being truthful. Um, so that's been an interesting experience. So the last month has been a good month. Like I said, it's had its ups and downs. I am really realizing that I can't just rely on the fact that I'm never hungry anymore because I am wanting food a little bit more. And if I have treats in the house, I will, you know, sneak a little treat here and there. And that is okay. I'm not depriving myself. Like if I want a little bit of chocolate here and there, I'm going to have a little bit of chocolate, but I just want to keep an eye on it. So it doesn't, you know, creep out of control where I don't feel like I have a choice in the matter. Cause that's how I used to feel. I didn't feel like I had a choice. I needed chocolate. It needed to be in the house. I needed to eat it every day. And it didn't feel like it was my decision. It felt like it was just happening because it had to. And I'm not saying I'm anywhere near that, but I can just, I just know that I need to work a little bit harder now and plan and prepare a little bit more. So that's going to be the big goal. So for the next month, plan, prep and prepare, try body pump and try spin. They're the three things that I want to do um, before my seven month update. So I will let you know how that went. Looking back at the past six months, because it, this, it feels a bit like, um, uh, it's, 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 a uh, what's the word? It's, 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 hmm. What do you call it? Like your 18th birthday or your 21st birthday. It's, it's not a monumental moment, but like, it's a, it's a, it's a time in, it's a point in time that means something. I cannot find that word. Um, but yeah, it's been six months and I was just having a think about it before I started filming. And honestly, making the decision to have surgery is one of, if not the best decision I've ever made in my life. Because I promise you, without a doubt, if I hadn't had that surgery, I would be sat here at the same way or more, more than I was six months ago. Um, and my life would have just become more and more difficult. It, my weight would have been more and more debilitating. I'm not saying that's the case for everyone, but for me, it was getting to that point where I could do less and less and it was really affecting my life and what I could and couldn't do. And 
it's it's just it's changed everything it's changed everything and i'm still really early on in my journey i'm only six months in um there's still so much time to come and so much of this journey and i'm just so excited to see what comes next now i know that things are going to slow down because the first six months is where things like the, the weight drops off faster the bigger you are the quicker the weight comes off um because you have more to lose and so now that i'm smaller than i was the weight's going to slow down i can eat a little bit more um like like i've been talking about some of those habits and so on it is going to be a bit of a slower journey so i've lost nearly half my excess body weight nearly half my excess body weight and that's taken me six months i predict I, I obviously don't know what the future holds and I don't know what my final weight will be. I don't know how much I'll lose. But if I'm to get to a healthy weight going off the BMI scale, which we all know is flawed and broken, but that's just, you know, if we look at that as an example for what I'm talking about, it's taken me six months to lose almost the first half. I think it would take me 18 months to, to lose the second half. If I manage to lose it all, I think it's going to slow down drastically and I'm prepared for that. As long as I see progress, I'll be happy. And I, it, I've i seen just so much progress already that if, if it slows down, I'm ready for that. I don't want it. Don't get me wrong. I'd love it to continue at this pace. I'd love to be sat here in six months and be like, I've lost 100% of my excess body weight, but I'm being realistic here. Um, I think it's kind of for me to be realistic like it's kind of for myself if I'm realistic with myself and set those realistic expectations so I think it's going to take another 18 months um to get to wherever I'm going to be and I'm okay with that because the first almost 50% has just changed my life so much that I feel like from here on I'm going to feel the changes so much more because I that we'll talk I'll talk about my starting weight in a moment it's not something I've talked about but I feel ready to talk about it um but the weight that I started at was a weight that meant that it took quite a bit of weight loss for me to start feeling those positive changes and to start seeing them. Um, and, and so I think you saw that in my videos. It took me quite a long time to see and feel the changes. And I think talking about like how I feel when I look in the mirror, I think I see it, oh God, like without a doubt, I see it now. But I think part of the issue I have with really recognizing it is that my body hasn't really changed shape. It's just changed size. So my tummy still looks the same, just smaller. Like it's the same shape, like I've got a bee belly. Um, it's the exact same shape, it's just smaller. And so I think when it starts to change shape is when I'm gonna really drastically notice. I mean, my boobs have gone, the, the, like uh, that's causing me a world of trouble. To get things to fit on my belly, they are gaping on the top now. So that's a bit of a nightmare. Um, so that's something I'm just gonna have to deal with, I think, until my tummy catches up because that's where I've always carried most of my weight. So that is gonna take some time to catch up. But I think until I start to see the shape, not just the size of my body changing, I think, I think when I see that, that's when I will truly recognize and see how drastic the weight loss has been or how big the changes have been. Um, like I said, I definitely see it now without a shadow of a doubt. I see it, but I don't see it as much as I think I would had the shape changed. Hopefully all that makes sense. Um, I just talk in these videos, like I literally write down like a couple of points of things that I wanna make sure that I mention. But other than that, like these videos aren't scripted, I just talk at you. So if it gets a bit rambly, that's why. So let's talk about the scales now. So. In this last month, I have definitely seen some stalls. Stalls are a part of this journey. Everyone goes through them. They can last for a week or two to a month or two. It's a part of the journey, um, but it's hard to go through stalls. Even when you know they're a part of the journey, it makes you question things, it makes you panic. It makes you think that it's all gone wrong and this is it, that's all the weight you're ever gonna lose. It's a real psychological battle to go through a stall and even though you prepare for it and you know it's part of the journey, it can still really mess with your mind. Um, and I haven't really experienced stalls in a while. I think it was maybe my second month that I was going through a bit of a stall and then it's been pretty consistent, like one, two, three pounds a week. Whereas in the last month, I had a couple of weeks where I stayed the same. I still lost 8.2 pounds in my fifth month, which is an incredible amount to lose. So it makes me 
more annoyed at myself that when the stalls came, I was so, I, was, I don't want to say that I was like devastated or super, super upset, but I was getting angry at myself and I did think, okay, maybe this is it. I've messed it all up. The surgery is not working for me anymore. As um, I'm sure anyone who has been on this journey will understand and has probably been through because it sounds from speaking to other people like quite a natural process to go through. Um, but even with that, even with being able to eat a bit more, having some more cravings and having some stalls, I still lost over half a stone in a month. So 8.2 pounds, which is good. Like a healthy amount of weight to lose a week is two pounds a week. And I did that. So it just goes to show that I need to look at things from a bigger picture, from a bigger, a bigger perspective. I'm not going to lose weight every week. There are going to be times where I stall. But maybe instead of looking at the week, I need to look at the month because when I look at the month, I see that I lost 8.2 pounds, which I'm really happy about. But if I was looking at it from week to week, I was a lot less happy. Um, so it's just an interesting reminder to myself and maybe anyone else who's going through a similar thing. Take a step back. Don't look at things on such a granular level. Have a look at what have you lost overall? What have you lost in the last month, in the last two months? Try and step back and know that there are going to be periods where things do stall and that is part of the journey and I know how hard that is I know because I found it really difficult but it's just it's just it's going to happen stall's going to happen if you're thinking of having the surgery it's worth knowing and preparing yourself in advance that stalls happen for most people um but yeah, I lost 8.2 pounds. So I'm delighted with that. And that brings my total weight loss since the start of my pre-op diet to 92 pounds and six pence, I nearly said. 92.6 pounds, which honestly blows my mind. I think, give or take, to get to a healthy BMI, I need to lose a total of 200 pounds. So 200, it's a nice round number, that's the number I've got in my head. I might not ever do it, but it's what I'm working towards. Um, so with 92.6 pounds, I'm nearly 50% of the way. So I'm nearly halfway through losing my excess body weight, which is um uh, yeah that it's 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 amazing it's amazing if it, it makes it makes me feel a bit emotional to think about because that's such an achievement um and I'm not the best at sitting back and like recognizing when I've achieved things like I'm quite um I'm working on it but I'm quite focused on what's next what's what's next what's the next thing what's happening now um rather than just sitting back and being like oh my god girl you literally literally have lost almost 50% of your excess body weight in 6 months like, that's amazing. That is amazing. So I'm trying to take this moment to be like, well done you, well done you. <laughs> um, in terms of my starting weight, it's not something that I'd shared before. And it's not something that I'd felt comfortable with sharing. And I didn't know if I ever would share it. But a lot of people have been asking. Um, and I do feel ready to talk about it now. So when I started my this weight loss journey, I was 367 pounds Point two. I can't say that. I keep going to say pence. I was 367.2 pounds. On the six month anniversary of my surgery, I was 274 pounds and six pence. So I'm well into the 200s now. Um, the next big milestone, milestone is the word I was looking for really when I was talking about like six months feeling like a, it's a milestone. This is my <laughs> words. Um, 250 feels like the next milestone so that's 25 pounds away um so that's just over two stones so it might take me like a couple of months to get there um but that's what my next big achievement feels like um so yeah now 274.6 pounds and I cannot remember the last time I weighed that I, I absolutely don't. Um, the lowest weight I remember is just before I went on holiday to Ibiza a couple of years back and I was trying really hard to do Slimming World and I managed to lose like two stone and then I put it all back on, like story of my life. Um, and I think I, at that point, got, I think this was like five years ago, 
four years ago, five years ago, I don't know. Um, I got to like 295. So I'm like 20 pounds lighter than my lightest, like memorable weight. So that's exciting. I think when I've had a look at what a healthy BMI weight for me is, like the highest weight that I can be in the healthy bracket is about 165 pounds. Um, so that's where I get the 200 pound weight loss goal from. Uh, like I said, if I don't ever do that, that's fine. It is a lot of weight to lose and I am going to have a lot of sort of excess skin and things like that, which is going to weigh a lot. So if I don't ever get there, I don't get there. I would like to get into the hundreds though that I would really, really like to happen. They call it Wonderland in, a, in, weight, in the weight loss community, in, into Wonderland. Um, so that would be that would be really nice. So if I don't get to 165, if I never have a healthy BMI, which is the most unrealistic, unattainable, outdated standard anyway, and I hate myself for kind of using it as a goal, but it, it's, it, you know, I'm a human. Um, if I can at least get into Wonderland, that would be amazing. So yeah, 92.6 pounds in uh, just over six months because that includes my two week pre-op diet. So six months and two weeks in um, total. I'm over the moon. I'm so happy. I'm I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited for what's going to come. I'm so excited to see what I can do and what energy levels I get and stamina and strength. And I just can't wait to see what my body can do as I become stronger. Um, it's unknown territory for me. It really is. I, I, I've been overweight my entire life. And so, like I said, it's unknown territory to, to see what my body is capable of. And I'm so excited for that. And I can't wait to bring you along on that journey. Um, I'm going to be documenting the fitness side of my journey a lot more on TikTok. So I'll link that down below in case you want to follow along there. I'll be doing some stuff on YouTube as well, but TikTok just feels a little bit easy for me to do really quick progress updates at the gym. Um, so I'll be doing a lot more of that over there. And in my next uh, weight loss update video, my seventh month video, I'll be able to talk to you about going on my first holiday um, post surgery. So I'm excited to talk to you about that. So I'm going to wrap this video up here because I feel like this is just as usual been a million years long, but I love to chat. So I hope you love to listen. <laughs> Um, thank you so, so much to each and every one of you who has been kind and supportive um, of me and this journey that I've been on. It's meant the world. Like, I was very nervous to share this news with you all um, when I shared it just after I'd had my surgery. And I cannot thank you enough for all the love and care and support because honestly, it's meant so, 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 so much. Um, so thank you to each and every one of you. I can't wait to be sat here in six months giving you my one year update. And I, I just think my life's going to look so different. Um, but I'm going to continue doing these updates on a monthly basis. So the seven month one will be coming um, in a couple of weeks. And I'll probably do another Q&A soon. So if you've got any questions that you want me to answer or if there's any videos that you want me to make, let me know. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.